how do people get into these buildings without doors? Uh, well, one, I think you'd be thinking way too much about the buildings. I mean, um, you already <laughs> are with thinking about these decorative doors. I am already. So we're about here, it. and we're gonna be semantic about it. Okay, fine, fine. We're gonna be semantic <laughs> about it. Up next on the show today, we have a soapbox, which means I, and actually Alex, I'm sure, uh, get to share our opinion. This is the op-ed piece. No, I'll just, I'll sit here just nodding the whole time so oh. that you can just talk and I won't talk. It's oh, perfect. good. Typical soapbox. <laughs> yeah, a general soapbox. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, uh, recently, for reasons that I still don't really understand, I went back and played the original Rage. Um, I have never played Rage. That's fine. Um, so... Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, I had played Rage 2 a couple of years ago when it came out, but it's been a long time since I played the original. I was like, mm, I'm kind of curious if I go back and see if it holds up, because I had kind of mixed impressions of it to begin with, and still do. Uh, <laughs> perfect. Perfect, yeah. Uh, but one of the things that I noticed more prevalently in that game that got me to thinking about how annoying this is in other games was a phenomenon I call decorative door syndrome. And that is basically when you're going through a world and they've presented you with doors, but the doors are not really interactable. You can never go through them. They are, they are just there for show just set pieces they're just set pieces a door that's just there to look pretty as a skin on the side of a building and i'm here to tell you that is a really really annoying game aesthetic if i see a door there should be something on the other side of the door the door it represents the transition from one area to another area. <laughs> if there's nothing on the other side of the door, why'd you put the door there? I don't understand this. <laughs> like, well, the thing is, sometimes there are games where I like I get this a little bit more. When they have like metropolitan games, Cyberpunk did this too. You can't go into all the places, um, and they need to have the doors to make it look like the buildings are buildings. Um, yeah, I was going to let you go on a, on a rant, but I was going to say, Nathan, I don't know if you've ever seen reality, but you can't generally go speaking, the buildings have doors. Yes, buildings And you cannot do. go through all of them. You can try. You can actually go through all of them if you try hard enough. Uh, you will be arrested. <laughs> yes. And you know what? There might be mechanics in the game if you go into places you're not supposed to go into. Right. I think the issue uh, of having doors always lead to somewhere else is then it becomes a, well, if we're putting a door here, it needs to lead somewhere. But that adds a lot more you need to create in a lot of these cases, whereas the door sure. is simply there to show you it is a building. On the flip side, if you were to say have cyberpunk, as mm -hmm. you're an example, where you are on the streets of the city and none of these buildings had doors on them, you would also right. notice that and complain that there's no way to get into these buildings. How do people get into these buildings without doors? Uh, well, one, I think you'd be thinking way too much about the buildings. I mean, um, you already <laughs> are with thinking about these decorative doors. I am already So we're here about it. and we're going to be semantic about it. Okay, fine, fine. We're going to be semantic <laughs> about it. Um, the reason I think it became kind of more of an issue in Rage, though, is because most of the time you are in these, like, broken down buildings that are just abandoned. They're, they're set pieces to go through, because it's a shooter by its nature, right. you, that you're going through to deal with, like, these raider clans that are there. But you get into these areas that are busted down, there's nothing in them, and they'll have places that just have, like, double doors. And those double doors are, some of them are just never brought back. And when you go up to them, they obviously knew that this was a door that somebody might interact with because a little caution sign will come up when you get up to that door to let you know you can't interact with it. Um... Some of these are ones that will loop back because there, there's supposed to be a lot of looping levels that come back and allow you through a door you couldn't go through previously. Um, but some of them are just there. 
They're just, they're just there on the side. And it's like, well, that would be an easy fix. Just don't present me with the door at all. You know, you just, you don't have to. It's not necessary. Um, you, you've, you've, in some places, you've put a bunch of stuff in front of where the door was, and then I have to get behind those areas to find the door that I can't use. So why not just hole up the whole thing, block off the whole area that I don't need to go through, and just not present me with the door at all? I'd be fine with that. I'm not complaining. I, I'd rather not deal with the door at all. <laughs> You know, right. uh, this this is something that I started to realize, like, once you start seeing it, you can't unsee it. So it starts to be the thing where you start going back through all of the other games that you've played and be like, wait a second, where were there other doors that I had a problem everywhere. everywhere? And I started to think to myself, like, Bethesda is generally okay with this when it comes to the RPGs, um, the Elder Scrolls games, if you remember settlements are pretty much open. Uh, there really aren't buildings that you can't go into. If anything, they might require a special key or something in order to sure. go into them. Um, larger areas, though, like in Fallout, Fallout traditionally doesn't allow you to go through everything. Um, right. and, and some of them are better than others, but I remember when I went to the Capital Wastelands in 3... And when you get into, like, the, the streets where the big buildings are that are all run down, there's a lot of buildings there. Uh, and, but then there, there, just, there, there are a lot of doors and other things that are just there for show because they really didn't have anything for those run-down buildings for you to go into. Um, and so I think that this is more of a metropolitan problem. Like, yeah. You, so, yeah. Question for you as an example. Would you prefer... Mm -hmm. In something like Fallout, uh, for instance, a building that has a door you cannot go into, mm -hmm. or a building that you can go in the door, but maybe the first floor, like it's the first entrance area of the building is like a ground floor with a staircase that is destroyed, so you can't get up above that first floor. I'm fine with that. I, I'm fine with I that. feel like that would require you need to then make it so essentially if it's a skyscraper or like a tower where it's got a staircase going up in the spiral that's part part of it maybe the first staircase is broken and it has no way that you can jump or cross the stairs to get up the rest but then it has a thing that you can look up and see how tall it is the issue there is generally if you put that much effort I think into designing that you're gonna ex players are gonna expect they can get up there right you know? right yeah no I understand um I think the other thing that I'm fine with is I've seen this done a lot and fallout will typically do that especially in like New Vegas I saw this when you get into buildings and there are certain areas you can't go to or stairs is where the doors are just like off and it's just caved in and you can see that it's right. caved in in the back. It's like, yeah, okay, I get it. I can't go there because there's, it's just caved in. Um, but yeah. but if you present me with a door that looks like it's perfectly enterable, like <laughs> it, look, it looks perfectly able to interact with, and I can't, I start asking questions as to why. Is this supposed to be something in the future? Am I going to have to remember this for the future? And like, I, I think that there's games that are able to get around that by either blocking them off or there's a caution thing around them or they, they just put them so far off the beaten path that you don't normally think people are going to interact with them in the main storyline. Um, they're just there for show in the outer parts. But when it's like right there in the course of the playing the game and I just can't interact with them, it starts to feel like the world building is purposefully, you know, railroading me in one direction and discouraging me from exploring altogether. And in, in some games, that is definitely the case because there are games that want a linear path for you. Um, they're telling right. a specific story and a, spe a specific progression path. Sure. And they don't want you to explore those areas so they do not make those areas they're like ah, oh, yes this is kind of a set piece but it, it don't go over here right exactly exactly which is why i don't want them to put a door there 
that's, that's kind of the thing. Is like I, I'm cool if you don't want me to explore there, but there are ways that you can make it clear that I'm not supposed to go there, uh, and and I am perfectly. All cool that. Yeah, put a false put hydra. Put a false hydra. <laughs> yeah, just have a whole bunch of very angry thralls in front of that door that are just coming at you full, full, <laughs> full gallop. Uh, you know, you could do that. Sure, why not? Um, there are, you know, there are other examples that you can give as you go through. I think shooters have this problem because they are trying to keep you on a linear pathway, but a lot of times they are going through cities, towns. And you can just you can't go into them. Um, I've, you know, I, I see that in Urban Sprawl. Like I think, I I know you played a little bit of like the Surge too. There are just a specific number of places you can go, but you are in the city, so you're going to occasionally want to interact with some of the other places yeah. there. But um, you've frozen on me. Oh, you're back. I'm not frozen. I'm here. Okay. Why is the internet being dumb? I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, so, yeah, from a design perspective, I started thinking about that and how annoying as a player it is when I am presented with something that is supposed to represent a new horizon, a place for me to go, and then you have given me nothing to go. You know what it is? It's the reverse of the Welcome to Jurassic Park moment. It it's is a welcome. Please leave Jurassic Park <laughs> yeah. moment. Yeah, it's the welcome to Jurassic. Um, oh no, sorry. Park closed. Go home. Go home. No, no park to see here. Sorry, folks. I, I, I faked you out. Go around the side entrance. The side entrance will get you. Go around. Go around. Yes, please. Yes, please. Go, go around. Nothing to see here. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Literally, there's no there's no way for you to interact with the curtain. The Wizard of Oz isn't here. <laughs> Just pretend it's not there. Um, from a design perspective, it, it it's annoying. Don't present me with something that I can potentially go into. Oh, Thief was the other example I was going to give. Because those streets are relatively open. Like, you can go from one area to another um, through blockades and stuff. So m a lot of the city is cordoned off. But occasionally, even though you're a thief and you're supposed to get into these buildings, you'll go across these areas where they've left you with doors to places that are just not there <laughs> entirely. And then you'll go to the next place and, oh, there's a window I can open up. And I can go through that window, but here's like an identical window. It is not interactive entirely. <laughs> it's like there's got to be better cues for me to know where I'm going and, and make it a little clearer that I can't go through an area, uh, especially if I've seen an exact thing like that that I have been able to interact with and I have gone down before. And so something to consider in game design, please don't make me hope. Right. Yeah. 